If you haven't noticed, barefoot shoes have really taken off and you might be thinking about getting a pair for yourself. I'm gonna suggest three things you should think about when you're choosing your first pair of barefoot shoes for training. And also I'm gonna suggest some good shoes that fit these requirements. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be a little bit more clued up and ready to get your first pair. I'll be focusing on barefoot shoes for working out. I know there are a lot of options out there for barefoot or minimalist shoes from different brands, but not all of their features are useful to someone who wants a pair to use as a shoe to work out in. The idea of barefoot shoes is simple, to cut down on the space between you and the ground, giving you a more natural or barefoot feeling when you walk. These shoes aren't gonna have the same level of support as a traditional shoe might have. Things like a padded arch support aren't going to be a feature. Barefoot shoes can challenge and encourage you to use and strengthen muscles in your feet and ankles that have other otherwise become lazy over the years. Weak muscles in this area can cause your feet to pretty much collapse and for many people this leads to misalignments in other areas of the body like the knees and the hips. Many people don't even realise that the shoes that they're wearing could be contributing to misalignments and pains that they're experiencing in other parts of their body. This is why I try to mix up my footwear. I do have slightly flat feet myself, it's a hard thing to fix. But being more mindful of the shoes you choose to wear, the way you walk and train can really help the situation. It really is that simple. But when it comes to to buying a pair of barefoot shoes in order to get the most out of them and value for money there are a few things that you should consider especially if you're going to be using them for a workout shoe let's get started every shoe mentioned in this video will be in the description via an affiliate link so please do consider using them if you want further info the first thing you should look for is flexibility the barefoot or minimalist category of shoe doesn't guarantee that the shoe itself will have good flexibility so when you're looking at buying a shoe look for that as a priority feel for its flexibility bend and splay your toes out. A lack of flexibility in the shoe will really show itself when you walk for longer periods of time. Do bear in mind that some materials do have a break-in period so they do get more flexible over time but that still doesn't mean that you should settle for a shoe that just doesn't allow your foot space or the ability to flex comfortably. I can't stress that enough. Some shoes are just not as good as others in this area. For example, this pair that I'm wearing currently are pretty good in the flexibility department. They do have a weave-like material that does hug your foot more. It also stretches and flexes with every movement of your feet and overall I think they're a very good pair. But something to mention is that if you're looking for a shoe only for lifting in, then flexibility isn't as important. There are many rigid shoes that are okay for lifting in. For instance, a shoe like a Noble Trainer, very rigid and inflexible, but it will give you a rigid base for lifting. But if you want a shoe for more than just lifting, then you're going to need that flexibility. Number two is test the grip. If you're going to be lifting heavy weights with them, the very last thing you want is for your shoes to slip. I know that many gyms have rubber matting in the weight area and it's highly unlikely that this rubber matting will cause your feet to slip but test them on smooth surfaces too like the platform this is where you're going to be lifting the heaviest weights i've used shoes that for some reason aren't that grippy on wooden floors or that don't grip well on wet pavements either so you just have to avoid running in them on rainy days i don't mean that a shoe you buy might cause you to slip as if you had walked on a banana skin but when you walk on some smooth surfaces you sometimes feel a slight lack of grip most shoes are okay but it does come up from time to time read through some reviews before you buy the pair and see if anybody mentions the grip performance of the shoes. A shoe that always gets good marks for grip is Innovate. If you haven't looked into them, I highly recommend that you check out their Bear XF shoes. Version 2 and 3 are very good in that department. The second shoe I'd recommend that performs well in this department is the Zero Prio shoes. I have a pair here. The Prio are considered a budget shoe as they cost less than £100 or $120, but for that money, you're getting a very grippy sole along with an upper that is very well put together with strong material materials and it's well worth consideration. Don't let that budget price fool you. The last for good grip are the New Balance Minimus TR. The Minimus are closer to the feel of a traditional shoe because they have a little more cushioning overall but the grip on them is very good. New Balance have a good reputation in the running shoe department and the grip on this pair performs very well in a host of scenarios as you'd expect them to. They also have a wider selection of sizing options so whether you have wider or narrower feet they have you covered. In worst case scenario there are actually sprays you can buy that go onto the soles of your shoe and some people have even put rubber tape on the soles of their shoes. These can be effective if the shoes you buy have really bad grip on wood or smooth flooring or if the grip on your soles is worn out in certain areas but obviously it's much better not to have to do that. Number three is how much space do they give you? The third most important thing that I look for in a barefoot shoe for training is the amount of space they have to splay your toes out. Being able to splay
splaying my toes out makes a big difference, especially when I get into the heavier lifts. As I've said before, properly being able to splay your toes out during lifts can give you much better balance and stability overall. And for me, it's a massive deal breaker. Even though I don't have wide feet, I'm not really keen on narrow shoes. They just don't work for me. I need room in the toe box to be able to splay my toes out. Luckily, toe box space is something that a lot, not all, but a lot of barefoot shoes do seem to really emphasize. Because for a true barefoot experience, a shoe is going to have to have extra room in the toe area. I don't think that any barefoot shoe that I've tried has felt super narrow or restricting, but there are some out there like the Merrill Vapor Glove that is known to have a very narrow fit, even though it's labeled as a barefoot shoe. But also you might try a pair like these Vivos and you might not like the feeling of space they give you in the toe area. When I first tried them on, I was concerned that they had too much room in the toe area. But after I worked out in them and I ran in them, I realized that the extra space was actually working in my favor. But it is very important that you try on a few pairs before you settle on one pair. I'll say this as well, if you're not used to training in barefoot shoes, it is possible that you might feel a bit sore after your first time wearing them. I remember the very first time I did jump rope in a pair and my feet felt sore for a couple days after. It's mainly due to the fact that these shoes kind of wake up muscles in your foot that otherwise haven't been encouraged to work. It's a small adjustment period and you do get used to it after a few days. Also, when you're walking on roads, if it's a barefoot shoe that has a thinner sole and minimal amounts of cushioning, you might be surprised at how you feel every crevice and bump in the road. I became more aware of these cobbled London streets when I started wearing these shoes myself. You might just have to ease yourself into them a little bit. With that being said, if this concerns you and you prefer a shoe that gives you the barefoot minimalist feeling without the thin sole, then the New Balance Minimus TR is a good choice. They're not as stripped down and I recommend them to people who still want the barefoot feeling but also want some of the comfort from regular shoes. As you can see here, you've got a thicker sole than you do on a pair like the Vivos. As I mentioned, links to all of these shoes will be in the description. Hopefully this video gave you something helpful when you're choosing your first pair of barefoot shoes. Any questions, leave them in the comments. Also, if you use barefoot shoes and you want to recommend a pair that work well for you, please leave them in the comments too. With that being said, as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.